Magic Treehouse, a Merlin mission. Carnival at Candlelight. Mary Pope Osborne. Dear reader, Carnival at Candlelight is the fifth book in a group of Magic Treehouse books called the Merlin Missions. On the first four Merlin Missions, Jack and Annie traveled to mythical lands where many magical things took place. I love writing books that take place in fantasy worlds, but I also love writing books about real life. So the next Merlin Missions will combine two, the two. Jack and Annie will have fantasy adventures in real places in real times. One of the most amazing places I've ever been is the city of Venice, Italy. Venice is a group of islands in a lagoon between the Indian mountains, mountain land and the Adirondack, Adriatic Sea. The water, the art, the architecture, the atmosphere all make Venice one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Writing a magic treehouse adventure set in Venice meant that I could return there in my imagination every day for many months. Working on this book was a very exciting journey. I invite you to share my journey and discover the mystery and magic of Venice for yourself. Mary Pope Osborne Chapter 1 A Book of Magic Dawn was breaking in the frog creek woods. Jack saw light shining up ahead. He ran toward it. He ran so fast he couldn't, couldn't hear his feet hitting the ground. He couldn't feel the frosty winter air. As Jack got closer to the light, he could see the magic tree house at the top of the tallest oak. A girl and boy were looking out the window. The girl had dark wavy hair and sea blue eyes. The boy had tousled red hair and a big grin on his face. At, as the two kids waved at him, Jack felt incredibly happy. Jack, wake up! Jack opened his eyes. His sister Annie was standing beside his bed. She was wearing her winter jacket. It was barely light outside. I just had a dream about the treehouse, she said. Really? Jack said sleepily. I dreamed we were running through the woods at dawn, said Annie, and when we got to the treehouse, Teddy and Kathleen were there waiting for us. Jack sat up. I just had that same dream, he said. Meet you downstairs, said Annie. Annie left Jack's room. Jack jumped out of bed, put on his glasses, and threw on his clothes. He grabbed his winter jacket and his backpack. Then he slipped quietly down the stairs and out the front door. Annie was waiting on the porch. The February air was chilly. Frost sparkled in the grass as the sun rose over Frog Creek Woods. Ready? asked Annie. Jack nodded and zipped his jacket. Without another word, he and Annie hurried up their street and headed into the woods. They ran through the long shadows of early morning between the bare winter trees. Then they stopped. The treehouse was back, just as Jack had seen it in his dream. It was high in the tallest oak tree, shining in the cold morning light. Wow, breathed Jack. Dreams can come true. Yep, said Annie. Teddy, Kathleen. No one answered. I guess only part of this dream came true, Annie said sadly. She grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Jack followed. Annie climbed into the treehouse. Oh, wow, she said. What is it? said Jack. They're here, said Annie in a loud whisper. Jack climbed up behind her. Their friends, Teddy and Kathleen, apprentices to Morgan Le Fay, were sitting under the treehouse window, wrapped in heavy woolen cloaks. They were both fast asleep. Hey, sleepyhead, said Annie. Wake up. Kathleen blinked and yawned. Teddy rubbed his eyes. When he saw Jack and Annie, he gave them a wide grin and leapt to his feet. Hello, he said. Hello, cried Annie. She threw her arms around Teddy. We both dreamed you were here. Ah, then our magic works, said Teddy. Kathleen suggested we send dreams to let you know we were here, and it seems our magic sent us to dreamland as well. But now we are all awake, said Kathleen, and I'm very glad to see you. She stood up, drawing her cloak around her. Her blue eyes sparkled like sea water in the dawn light. I'm glad to see you too, Jack said shyly. Are you taking us on another Merlin mission, said Annie? Not exactly, said Teddy. Merlin has a most important mission for you, but this time we will not be going along. Oh no, said Annie. 
What if we need your help, magic to help us? Teddy and Kathleen looked at each other and smiled. Then Ka Kathleen turned back to Jack and Annie. Morgan thinks you may be ready to use magic on your own, she said. Really, said Jack. Yes, said Teddy, but Merlin is very cautious about sharing magic powers with mortals, even with two as worthy as you. <clears throat> he is also wary of magic being used outside the realm of Camelot. Nevertheless, Morgan has convinced Merlin to let you prove yourselves. You will be tested on four missions. But we don't know any magic, said Jack. Remember what I told you on our last adventure, said Teddy? If we all work together, anything is possible, Annie said. But you just said you weren't coming with us. That's true, said Kathleen, and that is why we're bringing, we bring you this. She so reached into a pocket of her cloak and pulled out a small handmade book. She gave the book to Annie. The cover of the book was made of rough brown paper. Written on it in neat, simple handwriting was the title. Ten Magic Rhymes for Annie and Jack from Teddy and Kathleen. You made this for us, said Annie? Yes, said Kathleen. One line of each rhyme is in Teddy's language, and one is in mine, the language of the seal people. Annie opened the book up to the table of contents. She and Jack skimmed the list of rhymes, and Jack read some of the entries aloud. Fly through the air, make metal soft, turn into ducks. Annie giggled. These are so cool, she said. Let's all turn into ducks. <clears throat> Not now said Kathleen. You must use these rhymes very sparingly. There are only ten rhymes in the book, and each can only be used once. They are meant to last for four journeys. Four? said Jack. Aye, said Teddy. Merlin has agreed that if you can use your magic wisely on four missions, he will teach you the secrets that will allow you to make magic on your own. Oh boy, said Annie. Jack put the put a book of magic rhymes in his backpack. So where are we going on our first mission, he asked. This research book from Morgan will tell you, said Teddy. He took out a book and handed it to Jack. The cover showed a bright, colorful city surrounded by water. Jack read the title aloud, A Visit to Venice, Italy. I've heard of Venice, said Annie. Last year, Aunt Gail and Uncle Michael went there on a vacation. Aye, tis a city that is long welcome travelers, said Teddy. But you and Jack will travel to Venice of 260 years ago. What will we do there, asked Jack. Merlin has prepared careful directions for you, said Teddy. He pulled the letter out of pocket in his cloak and gave it to Jack. Read this when you get to Venice. Okay, said Jack. He put Merlin's letter and Morgan's research book into his backpack. Wait a minute, said Annie. If we take the treehouse to Venice... How will you guys get back to Camelot? Teddy and Kathleen smiled and held up their hands. They each wore a ring made of pale blue glass. These magic rings belong to Morgan and Kathleen. They will take us home, said Kathleen. Excuse me. These magic rings belong to Morgan, said Kathleen. They will take us home. Remember, Teddy said to Jack and Annie, follow Morgan's directions carefully. If you prove yourselves to be wise and brave helpers, he will call for you again soon. Kathleen nodded. Goodbye now, she said to Jack and Annie. Good luck. Kathleen and Teddy raised their glass rings to their lips. Together they whispered words too softly to be heard, then blew on the rings. Before Jack and Annie's eyes, the two young sorcerers began to fade into the cool morning air. In an instant, they had disappeared completely. They're gone, breathed Jack. I guess it's time for us to go too, said Annie. Jack took a deep breath, then he pointed at the cover of the Venice book. I wish we could go there, he said. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. <laughs>